going on? It's Logan from Daily Fishing. Today we're gonna be putting on these big tracks. I'm here with Ryan. Ryan from uh, Boat and Tackle. Uh, we're a Canadian owned uh, distributor for Trax Tech here in Canada. So uh, we're doing a boxing, an unboxing and, uh, and an install today. Perfect, so we'll get started. Right off the bat, your two end caps for your uh, tracks. I can't stress enough guys, you need to buy end caps. We've already had two guys that have, that are, that have bought tracks off us, spent a lot of money, drove down the road without their end caps on with their rod holders and lost their whole rigs. So I stress it all the time, if you're buying tracks, buy your end caps. Okay, so then we're down to your 48 inch tracks. This is how they come from Trax Tech. So really nicely packaged. If you look at the anodizing, here's the one thing that sets Trax Tech apart from everyone else out there. It's their anodizing. This will not tarnish. You're not gonna find three to five years down the road from now that these are yellowing or anything like that. So that's where Trax Tech sets themselves aside. Not only are they well manufactured, Jeff and Melody at Trax Tech really understand how sun affects things on a boat. So sun and water. Logan, here's your 40 inch inch tracks, and let's get them unpackaged and, uh, and get them on your boat. So notice pin, these are lift and turn. It's tough to do without it being in the track, but I can move it either way. I also can tilt it forward and back with a the pin. They are really made nicely, anodizing as well as aluminum. They're solid aluminum. So there's nothing here that you're gonna have to worry about on your boat. They're not plastic and that's about as heavy duty as you need on your boat. So we're just gonna show you, we're, we're gonna be installing uh, Logan's tracks on his boat. Logan, what's your boat? This is a Smoker Craft, 16 foot. Uh, so we thought we'd start off with, hey, what tools do you need to start? So I, I know it sounds pretty simple at times, but I want to remind everybody, we're gonna put tracks on it and we're gonna 3M put them down. So cleaning the, the gunnels first is important. So I just have a bottle of spray nine, a good cloth. We're gonna be drilling holes. So my wife really, I'm sure she doesn't love this, but I took the vacuum out of the house. This is for vacuuming up all the little aluminum things that we're gonna be drilling. We're gonna need rivets. So we're gonna be using this as well. It's a quarter inch bit on the end of that. Typical stuff I wanna tape down before I drill. So I just have, uh, you can use any kind of tape. This is gaff tape, um, just some painter's tape. Of course, measuring it, tape measure. Two things that are very important, quarter inch drill bit and a little chomper bit. And this is just to clean the hole, just so that we know that when we use the 3M adhesive that we're getting right inside the hole. Why don't you just talk a bit quickly of why you went with rivets rather than the hardware? The reason why I didn't go with the hardware, so it comes with nice stainless steel hardware and you have the rivets. So the difference in between the rivets and the stainless steel hardware, when you rivet it in, it's a lot easier to get those rivets into the boat than get underneath and use the hardware. It'll save you time, it'll save you effort, and it could possibly save you money because if you get in there and say you mess with too many wires and you end up snapping something or Oh, yeah, yeah. It's just it's just easier say for instance if you look over here this might be easier to get into right might be easier to get into to install that hardware but if you look on that side there's only maybe two feet where you can actually get in to install your hardware that's yeah. why i went with rivets you can this is the 3m adhesive this is just a regular set and then there's the 3M adhesive rapid. You can use either one. It really doesn't matter. Rapid hardens within an hour and then cures. This one just cures within 24 hours. You definitely want the 5200 series, not the 4000. So that, that's the one thing I want to stress about that. You don't need a lot of it, but it, your, your tracks aren't going anywhere. Rivet or bolt them down and use the adhesive. Of course, don't forget tape measure. Guys, we're, we want to make sure it's centered on its gunnel. We want to make sure that it's, it's on properly. That's the tools you need. We're gonna get started. Uh, we'll take some video along the way. First thing we did is I took a look at Ryan's boat. So when I went over to Ryan's boat, he's over there in his driveway. Uh, we looked at where his downriggers were positioned on his boat. We were talking about, so you see most guys on the internet or pretty much anyone, anyone anywhere, they want it to the back of their boat. It's just a pain to get to them, right? If you look back there, everyone normally would put it, say right here, or back a little bit farther. Well, I have this big, thing and the seat in the way so if I was to remove my seat even I could sit right here well I don't want them way back here I would rather have them say right where here right here where we put them and it's same with the rod holders everything else I just want it accessible right there 
so you can grab them. Yeah, Easy. You, you don't want to be leaning over. We've seen too many people leaning over the back of their boats trying to, you know, get clipped yeah. on, get clipped on and off. You're doing it so many times where you're trolling. You don't want that. So yeah. that's the nice thing about positioning them. Put the downrigger up here, kind of figured out where it was. Logan got in the boat, figured out where he was comfortable and came up first. First thing yeah. I want to do, everyone, is I always bring gaff tape because now that Logan and I have figured out where they're going to go, we've marked them. I don't want to move it, but we want to shoot a bit more video, but we want to know that they're, they're in place. So. We only need two. It's just enough to, I like gaff tape instead of gray tape. Everybody uses, I, I just like it because it doesn't stick to the paint. So now we can talk about it, move it around. I mean, I know I just kind of put it with a downrigger mic where you kind of want to put that in, but yeah. now it's in and we can. Like I was saying, most people put the downrigger back here, but you can see if I put it back here, even if I was sitting here or someone was sitting here, I'd have to reach over. Next thing you know, there's a cannonball on the end of this. It's swinging back and forth, swinging back and forth. You want to be able to grab it as quick as you can. So I'd rather have it up here. So when you're looking at the positioning of a downrigger, I would like it where it's easy to be accessible. So right here, someone could be sitting here. I could be coming back around, sit here. I could easily grab the cannonball that's coming up. If I'm back here or even further back, imagine trying to grab that cannonball when it's coming up. Now you're hanging off the yeah, boat. Yeah, exactly. Now you're hanging off the back. You're hanging off the boat. You have a chance of falling in. Not only that, you could have the cannonball swing, hit your boat. You don't want that happening. We actually decided to move it up. Easy to grab it. So yeah. It's always good to figure out layout out first that's all we stress all the time so that's why chad and i have boat and tackle listen i do a lot of boat installs i, I come from that industry like i spend a lot of time on boats and sailboats and installing a lot of gears it's always just good to talk i'm all a big fan of wisdom of crowds which is you know figure out what other guys have done what they don't like this is one of those things lay your tracks out figure out what you want think about it you notice we haven't driven, drawn anything on the boat yet we've used tape we haven't drilled we haven't drilled any of the holes yet all we've done is spent what 15 minutes just figuring yeah, out wh where do we want to put it and then once you're done hey then we're now going to put them on permanently so right now we're just marking the holes notice pencil only don't use a marker back of the gunnel yeah. all the way up there we did the same on this side gunnel 31 right across all we need to do now is center it So how did you center that? So look, what I did is, you know, I just took your gunnel. It's six inches. Six inch gunnel. So we just did three inch to the center. So that's what we're doing. We're mounting these dead center. So with what you've done, now I can go safely say, okay, great. There we're center. Now I can go back to this end. Haven't put the six inches in yet, but I can easily just do that. Mark our three. Always make sure you double check, triple check before you start drilling. Yeah, and that's what we're doing. That's why we decided to put both sets of tracks on in the sense of where exactly they're going to go first. And then once they're done, we'll tape them down and then we'll do one more measurement on both sides to know that, yeah, we've nailed it exactly where it's supposed to go. Those are all drilled now. Yep, I won't stress enough. You need a vacuum, guys. These are little aluminum shards. You don't want them in the water. You don't want them on your driveway. Pets, you know, you gotta you just, just take the time to vacuum them up. So typically as well, I always tell people when, when they order rivets from us, I usually send a set of rivets per track and then one act, one spare for each, okay. just in case, right? So it's good. So for here, like where we're doing it, so it's all good, but I always send a, a spare rivet for each set of tracks. So you end up with two spare rivets because, hey, I, I don't know people that, if they, they know what they're doing when it comes to riveting or not. So it's, so basically then we go all the way down, we push down hard, give it a pump, keep pushing down. There we are. Boom, done.
stuff. And I, I made this comment before, here's the rivet stem that's going in there. So in Logan's boat, we know that he's got some plywood below it, but he's got a good set of aluminum underneath here. But there's a few boats I've done, like I, I did a Hughes boat and it had a bit of tubing underneath it as well. Don't be afraid, like I drilled into the tubing and it wasn't quite deep enough. These rivets are, are really good. You can, on the first pump, it'll pull it up and then you can push it back down again and pull it up again. So it'll fit into any, I'm just saying, don't worry if you first go to do it and oh, it's, it's sticking up a bit. Just keep pushing down pressure as you're slowly pumping. They'll, they'll all fit in properly. Do you want to just turn the camera to here? So this is how the tracks come. There's always an exit point for, for gear. You know, this is what happens. You can slide them on and off either from the bow and this is the stern. So we can't stress enough. Guys, it's they're 20 bucks for a pair, right? Canadian, less if it's US. This little piece fits in, you bolt it down, you're ripping down the lake, you're not looking backwards, you don't lose gear. And we've had two sets of them already lost at the beginning of the season already. Guys that have bought GT100s, guys that have bought RH1, and they just did decided they rushed, they didn't put the end caps on, and it's a snug, there you go. Okay, so you get in the boat, you're talking with your buddies, you're not thinking, you put it in, but you don't tie it down, you throw your rod in there, and this is what happens as you're as you're ripping down the water, but it hits the end cap. You're fine. You're not you're not losing anything. You don't have the end cap. You have what a few of our our colleagues have already had. Falls off, and the rig goes with it. So that's rod, reel, probably the lure, and your holder, all because you didn't put a set of end caps on. There's my end cap plug. Again, just shooting a quick little video here. I want to show you. Listen, everything. These are the little turn down knobs for these, so that everything just slides back and forth, right? But all I'm telling people is you're running through the boat, listen, vibration, whether you're driving the vehicle or you're in the, on the water, you know, you're gonna finger tight these. There, we're tight and it's not gonna move, but not to say that it's not going to. So as a habit, I usually take one of my tools and I just give it a little quarter turn on one of the nuts. So I'm just saying, that's just one less thing you gotta worry about. This goes back into your tool cup or whatever holder that you've got for, for when you're fishing. And then when you're done, you, you know, you can undo the other one finger tight and then you just grab your tool and undo the ones that, you've, that you need to, just a quick little turn. But I just, it's just one of those little tricks that I found uh, with uh, putting all my rod holders on because I take them on and off every time I'm using them, that it's, it's just a nice safety factor to do with them. The All 3S 17, it comes with the salty on the top, Easy as can be. So when you have a big muskie on or big pike, whatever you're fishing for, salmon, this is good for every. So all you need to do is you pull up, rod pops right out. It's got a wig nut right here. You can change this to down rod or you can change this whole setup. So this is why you buy the 17 right here. So you just pull this button, pull it, pull it right out comes right down, boom, you got your down rod. You don't need to mess around with this little wind nut anymore. So that's why I suggest to buy it. It also has a swivel base mount. So all you need to do is pull up on it, swivels, boom, done. So you can pick, it pretty much goes any way you want it. Let's just put it that way. Great product. I will have amazing videos with this this year. I, I can't even believe uh, it's on the boat now. I'm pretty excited. So we just installed the 48 inch track. Very happy about the, that Trask Tech. But yeah, I'd like to thank Ryan very much for the day and didn't take too long. Honestly, riveting these things in, maybe half an hour, not yeah. even. Yeah, compared it, was, to, it, it was more about the uh, setup. Yeah. We took a lot of time setting up, which I, we just stressed to everybody. Take the time, take the time to measure up, take the time to think about what you're putting on how you're putting it on how you're going to function inside the boat which is what we did with logan logan got up in the seat moved around back and forth and once it's up and, and on they're permanent <laughs> yeah so we put ryan's uh cannon on here just to check it out it looks great i gotta pick myself up a pair and, of cannons or scotties and to just show the low profile swivel base on on them as well like it it, it does work really nice it's a nice it's a nice pull pin for, for swivel so let's see this pull pin yeah, so they're just the low profile, but you just pull the pin out and everything swivels. So they're it's it's nice. Like you can set it to whatever you want, right? There's the BNT boat yeah. and tackle. Put the boat and tackle logo there. These are nice. Most people, when you're looking at putting your downriggers on, low profile is what they're looking for. So we stock them all. So check us out on the website at uh, www.boatandtackle.ca. You'll you'll see all the parts you're looking for. All the all the salties, all of our rod holders. They also have a YouTube channel, boat and tackle, as well. So make sure you check both out. Make sure you subscribe, like, and comment. That's pretty much it. Thank you very much, Ryan. Thanks, Logue. And uh, look forward we'll, to seeing us on the water. We'll be out in the water soon. Yeah, yeah.